James, my man, thank you for coming on the Winner's Paradigm podcast, brother. I swear, man, every time I'm on Instagram, I see one of your videos and I see you kicking ass and I'm like, man, I just had to get this dude on my podcast. So before we get started, brother, would you mind giving us a brief intro, who you are, what you're passionate about today, my friend? No, I appreciate the intro and I'm uh, grateful that you asked me to you know, come on here. I've been following you for a while now and you know, it's a, it's a give and take. You see something that you like from somebody else and it helps motivate you. So it's a, it's a two-way street there. So I appreciate that. But uh, James Hughes, born and raised in Michigan. I'm currently living in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been here about five years. I've been in sports my whole life. You know, sports, fitness, you know, staying active has just been a part of my life, you know, since I can remember. But for me specifically, I was into basketball. You know, I'm six foot six, pushing 250 pounds. So, you know, I had to make the most of my height. So from a young age, I started into basketball, you know, uh, middle school, uh, high school, you know, I really hit my growth spurt, got into, you know, the the varsity team. And from there, it was just weightlifting. I think it was sophomore year, junior year. Um, So sports was a big part of my life growing up. And from there, I went on and I played college basketball at a small division three school in Ohio. Um, and that's where kind of, I would say my rocky road began in the, in the sense of, I learned the value of health. Okay. So in college, I underwent three, well, two major back surgeries. I had some herniated discs that I I was dealing with and, you know, that is really kind of what helped plant the seed for where I am today with my health and fitness coaching business is we don't realize how important health is until it's stripped from us, right? It's like, yes, sir. you wake up as a healthy individual, you don't think about, oh, I'm grateful to be healthy. You're just, you're focusing on other things, not until you're sick, not until, you know, your, your knees are given out, not until your, you know, your back hurts. Do you really think about your health? And so for me, you know, after college, you know, I really started focusing on my health because I realized like, I don't ever want to be in a position where I don't have my health again. So fast forward five years, I've been here in Nashville, you know, I've, uh, uh, you know, been coaching individuals on how to lose weight, put on muscle and change their mindset into, you know, becoming the best version of themselves, basically. So, I mean, there's a lot of details in there I skipped over, but, uh, you know, started from a young age and it really kind of carried into what we're, you know, talking about today. Yeah, brother. And and let's touch on the health side first. We're going to jump into, you know, multiple different things uh, on the fitness and mindset scale, but let's talk about the health side first, because that's something I'm battling as well. Uh, And that's something I'm vocal about is I barely started squatting after five years because I tore all the cartilage in my right knee when I was in the Marine Corps. And then the doctors were telling me, uh, after five injections, uh, and an arthroscopic knee surgery where they're like, oh shit, you know, we need to fix your knee. Um, but ended up getting out, you know, when I go to a doctor, they're like, it's going to be 50 G's to fix your knee. So something for me where I was just kind of like ego came in and I'm like, you know what? Fuck this surgeon. I'm going to get this surgery. I'm going to do it. He doesn't it. know what he's talking about, you know? Exactly. And, and what that meant was uh, going back to the drawing board. One thing that pissed me the fuck off was every time I talked to somebody, they would always say, oh, you need quad activation before you do legs. And it was something that would piss me off because I would be like, yeah, you know, I've done quad activation. I get my quads activated and then I do whatever. But for me, it was more importantly building that foundation of actually using machines, you know, working on my legs, getting them to feel good. Uh, Cause it's funny. It's like with this knee, that was something I had to do. And then at the same time, I've dislocated both shoulders four times. So I constantly yeah. strain my left shoulder, the more weight I do, you know, in proper form. Uh, so I stopped bench barbell bench pressing for two years yeah. and then just went strictly to dumbbells because I was like, Hey, I need to build up my chest. I need to figure out how to do pushups again. Cause pushups were tough for me. So for you, brother, how important is it to get right on the health side? number one, and figure out what you can do so it can lead you to be able to do more. 100%. I mean, uh, I, first of all, I didn't realize how many injuries you've battled with. So you, you know, the health side resonates for, with you. But I think, so we live in a world of social media, right? We live in a very, you know, um, you know, quick fix. You know, we see someone we like, we want that. We live in a very influential, you know, society. So when people see these influencers on, on TV doing certain exercises or they look a certain way or people they look up to are doing certain things, they automatically assume that in order to be like that person or in order to have his physique or be like him, I need to do that thing. And 
that's completely false. And I've learned along the ways that if you do not listen to your body and what your body needs, you're really putting yourself at you know at risk and an opportunity to miss out on your own development. So for me, going through those multiple back surgeries has really kind of made me take a step back and say, look, drop the ego and focus on your own physique, your own insecurities and your own body. And so what I mean by that is you've got to get the basics, right? You've got to build a foundation of, you know, um, a body that you're comfortable with. And so if you walk into the gym and you just want to be the strongest guy in the gym and you're not working on just those, you know, core fundamentals, you know, you're, what's, it just doesn't, what's the point of that, right? So I've, my, my biggest point to this is just drop the ego when you're working out and focus on when you look in the mirror, when you wake up in the morning, what's sore, listen to your body and work on those as a starting point. And so all the people that I train, you know, we don't, we don't train heavy weights, you know, you don't need heavy weights to, to get big. Um, what you need is the proper nutrition. And so that's the other key part of this is, you know, going to the gym is the fun part, but in order to actually be a healthy individual, it's eating the right foods that your body needs in the manner that your body can, you know, retain them. So like we were just talking about this before we hopped on, if, if you don't digest carbs very well, you know, find things or different carb source that your body can, you know, take in. So, you know, health is just, it's, it's full circle, but it's more importantly, listening to your body. I think that's the message I'm trying to convey is stop doing what other people are doing, stop being influenced by your favorite, you know, a bodybuilder or physique competitor, you know, Hey, what supplements is, is that person taking? Oh, okay. He's doing BCAAs. Oh, I better do that. Cause I want to be like him. So listen to your body. I think that's the, my biggest message I'm trying to convey. Yeah, hundred percent, brother. And that was something I had to learn as well. Uh, ran into a, an obstacle in the gym because uh, I had this bodybuilder dude in front of me one day. You know, what's funny is uh, I was bigger before when I had a little more fat on me. So just like a big ass fucking dude at 235. And uh, there's this bodybuilder dude in front of me with 125 pound dumbbells going on incline Jeez. bench. And he's hitting it and he's like, hey, man, hit this shit. And I, it took everything in my fucking body to say no to that. And I grabbed the 95s and I start repping it and I did it 20 times. And he looks at me and he's like, man, you could do that. I'm like, yeah, I can. You know, and I've worked myself up and now, you know, starting to do more, control the weight. And uh, it was funny because it was like traditionally I would have lifted that weight and be like, yeah, fuck off, you know, and had yeah. this go and, and boasted around the gym. But then I, I was like, hey, man, you know, uh, the risk to reward ratio doesn't make any sense is going up fucking higher, hurting myself and then going back all the way to the ground zero and be like, bro, why did I do that? You know, especially uh, having the dude spot me, but knowing that it's going to be pushing it to max capacity and saying, hey, you know, if I got all these injuries, uh, that's how I used to hurt myself. You know, in the Marine Corps, we would do that shit is try to lift as heavy as possible, you know, bench 350, and then you do it and you're fucking hurt for a week. And then you're like, oh, you know, now I got to go uh, to the doctor and get my shit checked out and all of a sudden putting yourself back. So I love the way that you said that on listening to your body. And then you also talk about the nutrition factor. So how important is the nutrition? Because a lot of times people don't fucking think about that. And I know for me, that was the missing link was uh, I was doing everything that I needed to do. You know, I had the mindset dialed in. Uh, I'm doing everything. I have the habits dialed in. I'm in the gym six days a week. But the weight's not coming off because the shit that I'm putting in my mouth was not it. <laughs> Absolutely. I think there's a big misconception that the harder you work out, the more, or, you know, the more results will come and the quicker they'll come. It's not the case. It's a 90%, you know, 90% of the results that you'll see with your physique specifically is going to come from your nutrition. And so I was that same guy, right? So we've all seen those guys in the gym who are there for years, right? You've seen the same guy in the gym and they've made absolutely no progress, right? You see them every single day. Their physique does not change. And you're asking, it's like, what is this guy doing? It's like, he's working out, he's working his ass off. He's making no change. It is because of most likely their nutrition. And so that was me, right? I was, and let me preface this with saying, just because you're eating healthy foods does not mean it's the right thing for you. Okay. So let me give you an example. So a handful of years ago, I was doing that. I was working out five days a week. I was eating chicken. I was eating broccoli. I was eating sweet potatoes. I was meal prepping. And in my head, I was like, 
all right, we're going to, we're going to make some gains this year, bro. And I realized that nutrition is more than just eating healthy foods. It's eating the foods that your body needs. And so there's a, a term in the fitness industry, obviously, if you haven't heard it, you might, you might be newer, um, but the term macros, right? Macronutrients. So everybody has a profile that their body needs for macro specific to you, whether it be if you're losing fat, building muscle, or just trying to maintain, if you don't understand the total caloric intake your body needs and breaking that up specifically into the macros you need, like you could be spending years in the gym, busting your ass and you're never going to make any progress. And so, and we can dive into specifically, you know, what the macros needed or, or, break down nutrition, but I think it's absolutely critical. If you're not making progress, whether it be with your physique, you're overweight, and you're not shedding those pounds, stop looking to what can I do more of? You need to look at the nutrition and what can I take away? Because most likely you're overeating or you're eating the incorrect amounts of foods. And I would take inventory of, of your, your eating habits and start there. So that's what I'll kind of touch on first from the nutrition standpoint. Yeah, brother, I love that, and uh, that's something I had to learn about is macros as well. Because I've uh, I learned the old school way, uh, just eating broccoli, chicken, and rice. Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, my wife, when uh, I was in the Marine Corps, she went to the Navy, and she was in boot camp. So she was out for six months. For five of those months, all I ate every single fucking day, all three meals. Uh, first meal I started with it was uh, two eggs, and then I would have a cup of uh, ground turkey, and then I would have half a cup of rice half a cup of cauliflower rice, and I would have broccoli every single morning. And then it would go into chicken, broccoli, and rice, and then salmon, broccoli, and rice for dinner. Mm -hmm. It was cool for five months. You know, I got lean as fuck. But the problem was it's not sustainable because yeah. I wanted to start eating McDonald's and all this bad shit after that when I started getting burned out about how bad it tastes. So how significant is it for us, you know, to find out what works with us, but more importantly, figure out how to make good meals that are going to keep us to keep this a lifestyle change and then more importantly, put that in conjunction with the workout program we have. So it's not something that, you know, you have two things that aren't dialed in and then it's like, oh, well, you know, the nutrition, it's like, oh, well, I'm eating a little bit better, but now my workouts are stale because I'm doing something that just doesn't fit with what my body needs. Let me, let me, let me ask you this. If you were guaranteed to get a six pack, 7% body fat, but you had to work out two hours a day, do cardio for an additional 45 minutes and only eat chicken and broccoli for the rest of your life, right? Would you do it? Honestly, what, what would you do it? A absolutely, brother. And, and then again, you know, it's about your goal and uh, what you're looking to accomplish, right? Okay. So most people, you, you, you're you different, brother, but most people would answer that as no. And, and why is that? Is right? Is because working out two hours a day is not sustainable, right? Eating just chicken and broccoli is not sustainable. So to your question, living a healthy lifestyle has to be done in a sustainable way. So the, the absolute critical point I'm trying to prove is if you start a quote unquote diet, or if you go on a, a program that is not sustainable because A, you don't enjoy it, you're eating the foods that you can't eat the rest of your life, you're going to fall off. So I think it's very important to find foods that you enjoy eating that fit within what you need and do it in a sustainable manner. So what I like to teach is the 80-20 rule, right? 80% really healthy food, 20% junk food, like treat yourself. Like there's the misconception that you have to be perfect. Like we're humans, we're flawed individuals. So we're, we all have cravings, right? We all want to have something sweet. I think we should treat ourselves in moderation and keeping it within our total caloric, you know, limit that we already have understood for ourselves. So sustainable is huge when it comes to staying in shape. So, um, I probably should have prefaced you for that question, but <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's my bad brother. The reason why I say that is because for me, uh, I know every single day I need to eat chicken. I just yeah. know my body feels off without that. But now what I'm realizing is I like fucking steak and red meat so yeah. much. So yeah. I'm starting to incorporate more red meat. And it's funny. It's like without one or two of those, uh, either the chicken a day or the red meat, I start feeling weaker. And like, I notice it yeah. in the gym, you know, I start pushing and I'm like, bro, my body needs higher protein. Cause one of my buddies are trying to get me to be a fucking vegetarian. And I was telling him like, oh, nah, no, for me, you know, it can't do that. Like I eat a lot of meat and I, I feel my body 
of feeling the wrong fucking things when I'm not doing that, when I'm not eating whatever, or eating, you know, the albacore tuna that's 40 grams of protein, eating two of those. It's like, it's hard to do, but you can stomach it. You can get it done. And it's like, for me, I know my body is, hey, high protein diet is going to make me feel better. I'm also going to feel stronger. It's going to allow me to be better in the gym and then being able to push that mindset. And that's something I love as well, you know, about the gym is the gym is something for me, you know, going through all these things, trauma in life, uh, getting abused, getting my ass kicked was the gym was that one place that I can be able to be mentally sound, but to push myself so I can be able to gain some strength that helped me in all these other places in life. So for you, brother, we're talking about mindset. We're talking about getting better, becoming a better man and acknowledging all these things, the flaws, the areas in life that we need to fill in these gaps. What do you recommend to us? You know, if we're going through those motions, we're feeling like our mindset is geared to, you know, a level three, but we really need to push this to a level five. Yeah. So I think the way I look at the, the gym is as a tool. And for me, I chose the gym as a tool to work on my mental health and how I felt about myself. There was a point in time where I, I looked in the mirror, I woke up every morning, I didn't like what I saw, I didn't like how I felt, I didn't like just what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And so there were there were not many other options for me to go. To, I didn't want to do a th I wanted to go to a therapist. I didn't want to pay somebody to talk about my problems, right? So for me, I chose the gym as a way to really test myself. And and that's all that 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 fitness is. Is we go and we subject ourselves to a level of discomfort, punishment for a better form of ourselves in the future, right? Where there's a, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of discipline that goes into going into the gym and pushing yourself past that, you know, that, that muscle fatigue, you're on that, the, the eighth rep and you're like, I, I can't do it. And you push through it anyways, subjecting yourself to that pain is the ultimate form of growth. And so for me, I, ch I chose that to help just, it was my form of therapy. And so it turned into the physique was a byproduct of me just wanting to improve my overall confidence. So when people say they struggle with self-confidence, it's probably because they keep breaking promises to themselves, right? They they don't feel good about themselves because they they say they're going to do something and they don't do it. So in the for me, the thing that I found that has helped the most in helping improve your level of self-confidence is setting small daily goals for yourself in the form of going to the gym focusing on getting your workout done. And what you're doing is you're building these, these habits of, hey, if I set something and I do it, I feel better about myself. And that just snowballs. You, you start thinking about things differently. And so the gym is, is an avenue into so many different you know, aspects of life because you're changing your mindset. People think that we're selfish because we want to go to the gym and work out and, and improve our physique. But that's not the case. You know, we're using it to become a better person. And so uh, that's that's what I like to try to convey to people that say, oh, you know, the gym is, you know, you're, you're, you're all, all about yourself. You spend too much time there. You're worried about yourself. But honestly, it's, it's like if you're not happy with where you are, how many people can you help? How many people can you impact? So for me, it started as I just wanted to improve my my mental health. And it snowballed into now I'm helping other people. So um, I know that was a little long winded there, but, you know, it's it's a tool. And if you use it in the right way, it can have a lot of a lot of uh, benefits for you. Yeah, bro. I love that. And I'm, I'm the same way, you know, advocating for mental health is uh, I have to work out every single day. Whether that means a walk, whether that means burpees, uh, even the days that I'm supposed to be taking off from the gym and just stretching, I do burpees or I do push ups or I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, squats and try to do something just because mentally I don't feel sound. And uh, I know in my body, I feel like I want to start screaming and just fucking yelling at people all the time. And I'm just like, <laughs> a man comes up to me acting <laughs> stupid or uh, giving limited beliefs. And I know for me, the military side and then kind of how I was raised, I was just like, bro, I just want to fucking scream at everybody and just be like, not hey, today, bro, you're, bro. Not, you're not fucking getting it. So for me, the mental health side of working out or whatever allows me to just calm down. And for instance, like this morning, uh, able to work out and then I come with a different lens and I'm able to have more patience and I'm able to be better as a man and talk about it and be like, hey, man, I too was at that spot. And that's why I get fucking pissed off when somebody comes to me and they're complaining or whatever, because yeah. I've been the same thing, you know, and our mentors, uh, luckily at that time, were guiding us whether we wanted to take that information or not. 
and then take it. So now, you know, as the leader, uh, hearing these things, you're like, hey, bro, I can help you because I've been there and it's a different light. So I love the way that you said that because that's something that I'm always doing is like just for my mental health, I have to work out a day. Uh, for the most part, I work out twice a day, take off one day a week just so I can heal my body and make sure I'm feeling good. You know, and that means uh, kind of like this morning, you're taking cold plunges or you're taking a cold shower just to be able to stimulate your body and feel better overall. So for you, brother, what's it look like? I know we mentioned the nutrition dialed in, we mentioned the workouts, we mentioned the injuries, but how much do you take care of yourself and put into yourself so you're continually able to show up day in, day out? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a, it comes full circle. It's how you do one thing is how you do anything. So for me, it's, it's like, I want to look good and feel good. So for me, I think taking care of yourself is, is critical. So, um, I mean, it's, it, it goes down to how you present yourself to, to the world, right? So if you wake up out of bed, you know, you, your alarms at six o'clock, you roll out of bed at seven, you know, you, you know, scramble something together cause you're late for work. You run out the door, your shirt's wrinkled, you know, your shit's untucked, you know, your shoes are un, uh, undressed. It's like, that's the person you're presenting to others. Right. And so you want to become a better person, you know, look at yourself. It's like, how are you presenting yourself to the world? Right. You're sick of feeling a certain way. You know, you're sick of, you know, I'm never given an opportunity. You know, my boss doesn't like me at work. You know, I, I keep getting passed up for a promotion. You know, it's like, well, why don't you look at the small things? Right. Do you brush your teeth every morning? Do you iron your shirt? Right. Do you put your shoes on and tie your laces? You know, how do you how are you presenting yourself to, to the world? And so I think the way you the way you look, the way you present yourself and carry yourself is very, very important. And so I think, um, it all ties together, you know? Um, but that's my take on it. You know, I, it's, I don't, I don't go out dressed up in a, a tuxedo every day. Right. But you know, you, you care about the way you look. And so I think if you can present yourself in a good light, doors open up for you in life. And so and that's, that's what I tell everybody who comes to me. They want to, they want to lose weight or they want to make more money. It's, get in shape and people will notice, you know, it's like, let me ask you the last time that you walked by a complete random stranger in public and they were like ripped, right. They were just like shredded out of their mind. Like I guarantee you there's a thought that went through your mind. Like, damn, that's impressive. No, it, it, it's a fact, brother. It is 100% a fact. Uh, I know that. And I know it with my psychology as well. Cause I met someone, uh, it was a cousin's boyfriend and I was already kind of like, I don't fucking I, you know, I'm big on energy. So it was kind of just looking at the dude and from they were talking a big game about the dude. And I hate fucking when people talk a big game about people because I realized that a lot of the times, you know, it's not true. So comes out the dude's a bodybuilder and it was like instantly seeing him. I was like, I fucking respect you. We started talking. I can tell who he is versus, mm -hmm. you know, other people that I've met. And it's like, bro, you just analyze their behavior. You're watching them drink beers, watching them drink soda, eat fucking chips. And it's just like, that's how you're going to show yourself and bring yourself as the best version of yourself in front of a bunch of people. And it yep. was funny as dads because he's trying to give me dad advice and tell me, oh, da, 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 this or that. And I'm like, bro, you can't even fucking respect yourself. So why am I going to respect you? So it was funny that you mentioned that because that was something for me where it was like, you can look at it at face value, but you're going to see by how someone shows up, what they're doing, their, their actions of who the fuck they are. So I love the way that you said that, brother. Yeah. I mean, I put out a real, you know, I don't know if you saw it or not, but it's, the, the underlying message was you are literally a billboard of your behavior. The things you do behind closed doors, you are presenting yourself to the world. You're broadcasting your behaviors, right? So if you're out of shape, you know, you're, you know, you're winded going upstairs, you know, whatever it's because of the things that you do every single day, right? Do you make those good decisions? So if you're out of shape, it's because you have, you practice bad behaviors, right? If you're in really, really good shape, you know, and you see somebody, they automatic, you automatically give that person a level of respect because you know what goes into that physique. There's a subconscious, like nobody needs to, you don't even need to say a word to this individual. And you automatically know like that guy's got dedication. That guy's got discipline. That guy has a sense of sacrificing immediate pleasures for a long-term benefit, you know, and that's the types of traits and qualities that other people want to be around. So when, back, going back to, you want to be more respected. You want to be more liked. You want doors to open up. You want job opportunities to come up for you. Get in shape because you don't have to present a resume. You are a walking billboard of your behaviors, right? So 
I'm a, I'm a big advocate on that. It's just, you know, you're broadcasting to the world with your physique, the way you look, how you carry yourself, your daily traits, you know, your habits. So what 100% brother. And I come from a culture that's a little bit harder, uh, in the Marine Corps is like, they used to just be like, Hey, you're a piece of shit by the way you show up <laughs> and the way you look, you know? And for me, I'm always been bigger, uh, always lifting weight. So they'd be mad at me as like, Hey, you can't make the weight, but I would tape out. And I'm like, Hey man, you know, you want me to look fucking big? You want me to look fat and just be sitting here? You know, I'm like, my, I'm naturally stocky. So that's how my body is. But I'm like, two, I feel better. I'm stronger. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Uh, I was able to run around like crazy, even being bigger, you know, 220 at 5'8", you know, and they were like, whoa, you know, how did you do that? Obviously, I had to lose a lot of weight, you know, and, and get smaller uh, for my body because of the injuries and so forth. But it was funny, you know, looking at it and saying, hey, you know, what works for me? How do I show up as best version of myself? But two, it's it's saying exactly that. And I love the way that you said that, you know, is how you walk in like for me i got naturally big arms so i use that to my advantage just go in there with a pump in a room or something and then you get you gotta turn sideways and walk through the door you yeah know? you get people uh naturally walk up to you and hey man da, 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 you know and i'm a high energy guy so something you pick up quick and that's something that i learned as well you know throughout this time period is you can put the work in on yourself you know you can do all these things but just off the energy levels you can tell where someone's at you can tell what the fuck they're doing you can tell you know if they're serious about their craft and uh, that's something that I've took in with the parent lens is just kind of listening to other parents. It's like, ah, uh, you know, whatever, because a lot of times they don't live up to the things that they're saying. The pain doesn't hurt them bad enough. They didn't see it. And for me, I was taught everything of what not to do. You know, good thing is my dad partied like crazy on the weekends, but this man was in the gym at five in the morning during the week and it was respectable. So that's something that I took and I'm like, hey, I need to be in the gym like this, but I need to get rid of the drinking. I need to get rid of the things that do not serve because it's time to be the best parent that we can be. One of the things you talk about as well, you know, is finding the time, making sure that we set the proper example that we still become the best person that we can be no matter the obligations or whatever else it is so for you brother as a parent what does it look like for us to be able to show up number one but to be able to teach the actual right things that our kids need to know yeah so i've got a two two and a half year old daughter parker you know she's two and a half going on 16 already let me tell you she's got her own <laughs> personality it's it's really fun to to watch develop but i think it's you have to ask yourself you know would, would this be the person that you'd want to look up to for yourself, right? So in, I'm talking about looking in the mirror, right? You look at in the mirror and you ask yourself, you know, are you somebody you would look up to? Are the things that you do every day something that you would want somebody else, such as your daughter, your, your, your son, uh, any siblings to look up to you? So for me, having a, a daughter was my biggest why, and that was my biggest reason for change is because I wanted to have set a good example for her on how we should behave, how we should take care of ourselves, treat others. So for me, I think having kids is the ultimate responsibility. When you can put somebody else before you um, 24 seven, that is the ultimate form of, of responsibility. And it goes back to even before that, it's if you're not comfortable with where you are, if you are not the best version of yourself at the time being, it's not, it doesn't mean that you're not going to keep growing. But if you're, if you're the best person that you can be in today's moment, that is enough for them. They see that. They see dad waking up early. They see dad say something and he, he commits to it. They see dad working out every day. They see him eat the right foods. They see him make good decisions. Uh, maybe two, two, two years old is a little young to understand the social dynamic of, hey, it's Friday and I'm not out drinking, but it's the behaviors that are done repetitively that are setting the good example. And so for me, a big part of the reason why I wanted to change was because, you know, there was now a little human in this world that I had to take care of that I refused to, you know, be a, a shitty example for. Brother, I love that. And, and I believe, you know, that they do get it. You know, my daughter's going to be two and uh, I'll do burpees, for instance, right next to her when she's playing. And now she's learning. <laughs> she does a little she's doing burpees uh, too. <laughs> yeah, she tries to do a little handstand, try to do pushups, you know, so she gets it and I'll be like, all right, you know, and she'll get in trouble. And I'm like, one of the things is like, I'm not going to hit my kids, but I'm going to haze them and make them do a lot of pushups and shit. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's do pushups. You know, you want to give attitude, do pushups. And she's like looking at me and then I get down with I her. Love that. 
I'm doing push-ups with her. So it's like one of the things that I wanted to show her on that. But two, it's uh, always doing something that's active and teaching her even at a young age to where she doesn't acknowledge it is, hey, that's powerful. So you've been an amazing guest today, brother, and I really appreciate you. So I'll leave you with the last question to ask everybody. What would you say to the previous version of ourself? We're just trying to align ourselves to our definition of success. We don't know where to start. We're at that beginning of the journey. What I would say to that person is, you know, you're good enough and believe in yourself. And the person that you want to be is right in front of you. You might not be able to see them, but take that first step. You might not be able to see the next 20 steps. Just take the first step that you know. If you're not happy with where you are and you want to change, you don't need to know the next 20 steps. You don't need to know everything to do, but you do know the right things to get started. So I would just say, be true to yourself. Don't try to be somebody you're not, you know, show up every day for the ones you love. Just become the best version of yourself through keeping promises to yourself. And for me, that is the ultimate form of becoming a true man is you set goals for yourself. You set promises to yourself and you keep them And the, the rest are dominoes, man. Like there's not, not much that you can't accomplish if you are just true to yourself and you help others along the way. So that's what this is about. It's a community. You know, we, we, we get ourselves up and out. We got to reach back and help somebody else out. So that's what it's all about, brother. Hell yeah, brother. And where can people find you, man, if they want to keep up with you or they want to find you on social media? Yeah. So I'm very active on Instagram, James underscore Hughes underscore fit. Um, I also have a YouTube page. I post content every Sunday, try to pr provide all my followers with some sort of educational content. Uh, James Hughes fit on, on YouTube, but if you want to connect, hit me on Instagram. I'll get you, I'll get you right back. Hell yeah, brother. Well, we'll definitely have people going to you. I appreciate you for coming on. We'd love to have you on in the future a second time. Absolutely. So thank you again, my friend. No, I appreciate you and, uh, give them, give them one time right here. There it is. <laughs> Thanks yeah, brother. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's go. My man. Well, I appreciate you, brother. It was been an amazing episode. Thank you again, my friend. Awesome, brother. Have a good one.